Sunderland and Liverpool are two clubs with many honours between them, but few may know the name of a man who got the ball rolling for both of them. Tom Watson won both Sunderland and Liverpool their first ever top flight titles and was the first manager to win the league with two separate clubs. Sadly, despite what he achieved for the two sides, his name has faded over time. This is a story of Tom Watson, a Liverpool and Sunderland legend. Tom Watson was born in Newcastle upon Tyne in April 1859. His involvement in football began when he was a founding member of Newcastle based side Rosehill. He would be involved as a secretary for both Newcastle West End and Newcastle East End, and would help West End secure a lease on St James's Park. After resigning from West End following a crush at St James's Park, he would join Sunderland, a place where he would truly make his name. Whilst managers then tended not to be involved as they are today, Watson was a man years ahead of his time. He conducted daily training routines for his players, focusing on two training sessions as well as morning and evening walks. He got players on healthy diets, encouraging them to keep consumption of milk, butter, sugar and potatoes to a minimum. Sunderland were admitted to the Football League after they agreed to contribute to the travelling costs of their opponents due to the amount of time it would take them to get to Sunderland. It wouldn't be long before Watson took them to the top. In 1892, Sunderland were champions of England for the first ever time. They won it by 5 points, scoring 15 goals in their last 3 games and John Campbell got 37 goals in all competitions. William McGregor, a founding member of the Football Foundation, described Sunderland as the team of all talents. Upon visiting Sunderland, journalist Victor Hall remarked that Watson's team did not stand out physically, but together they were the perfect unit, which made them head and shoulders above everyone else. He also remarked how Watson would rub whiskey onto the backs of his players to ensure they were kept warm. Watson had strong connections with scouting, and sent Robert Turnbull to Scotland disguised as a priest to help recruit talent. Sunderland retained their league title, this time finishing 11 points clear, and Watson had truly put them on the map. Another league title followed in 1895, and later that year, Sunderland faced Hearts, the champions of Scotland, in a friendly that was pipped as a Championship of the World title match. Sunderland were victorious and hence were declared Champions of the World. Watson would leave the North East behind in 1896, travelling southwards to Liverpool. Sunderland were compensated for their loss, and Watson was paid a whopping £300 a year at Anfield. Liverpool chairman John McKenna was keen to have someone who could manage the players effectively. He used the same methods of training and diet that had served him well at Sunderland, and guided Liverpool to a fifth place finish in his first season at the helm along with reaching the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Watson signed 17 players the next campaign as he looked to overhaul the squad and they came close to winning their first league title, missing out to Aston Villa. They reached another FA Cup semi-final, although the next season they dropped 10th. However, Watson's side would soon make history. In 1901, for the first ever time, Liverpool won the first division. Watson had worked miracles becoming the first man to win the league with two different English clubs, an achievement only three have done since. It was the first of many for Liverpool. Watson had become widely adored. It is said his name was first on the list of invites to any sporting events, and he would often sing at dinners, leaving people in stitches of laughter. Everyone he met had nothing but good things to say about him. Liverpool were relegated, but won the second division in 1905, and the next year won their second top flight title. Watson guided Liverpool to their first FA Cup final in 1914, although they would lose 1-0 to Burnley. Watson would remain in the role until 1915, when tragedy struck. On the 6th of May 1915, Tom Watson died, aged 56, following a battle with pneumonia. His passing was met with an outpouring of grief, and who'd be buried in Anfield Cemetery, only around the corner from the stadium that would later become a cathedral of success, something that would not have been possible without Watson. The fact that Tom Watson is not a household name in the world of football is a disservice to his legacy. Sunderland and Liverpool will forever be in his debt, 
as they may never have won a major trophy without him. To have won five league titles as a manager is an achievement few can boast, but Tom Watson was so far ahead of his time, pioneering coaching methods we commonly see today. It may be Bob Stokoe and Bill Shankly who have their respective statues outside the Stadium of Light and Anfield. Without Tom Watson, those stadiums may not be standing at all.